Good morning, everybody. This is Fago Franklin III with New Stitch Media. Today, I am joined by boxing promoter and wife of Johnny Tapio, uh, Teresa Tapi. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. So before we get into your journey um, with your uh, promotion company, uh, can you give my viewers some words of encouragement? I'll give them exactly what Johnny used to say. Never give up. <laughs> so, know, no matter how hard life gets, just never give up. Amen to that. So what got you um, started with your own product, I mean, promotion company? What inspired that? Well, it started back in the 90s. I, be, I was probably one of the first female boxing managers at that time. And I guided my husband's career. And it was something that just didn't happen. I mean, women just were not in that game at all. And it kind of led as towards the end of his career, you could see other promoters that were trying to use him to use him as an opponent rather than, you know, the legendary person that he was. So we kind of broke away, went off on our own, and then I became a part of the promotion side of it. How did you meet your husband first and foremost and what trials and tribulations that y'all had to come just in general with being in that industry? <laughs> That's a loaded question. So I met him um, when I moved back to New Mexico from California. And Johnny was, like I said, they call him Evita Loca for a reason. So mm -hmm. uh, our dates were filled. Like some, we got married within the two weeks of meeting each other. And let's just say on the way to that marriage, it included, there was, it's going to all come out and it's part of it's in his book. But there was like oh. a first night there, there was, let's say, felonies involved. There was just crazy. There was a lot of crazy stuff, but that was part of living with Johnny. And then encountering the boxing because he had been thrown out for four years and mm. then he got back in and it was a big, big challenge because nobody had any faith in him. And then as he they did have faith in him, Johnny still had a lot of problems on the outside. So he was always something happening and it was a it was a roller coaster ride. And, you know, but we did it. We did it together and it was challenged. We were challenged because here I was a female trying to help him. And here he was this crazy guy, but it actually it worked for our advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So after he had passed away, how did you overcome that grief? Because I know when you love somebody, it's so hard to let go after they pass away. I don't know if you can ever overcome it. We were married 20 years and it seems like the longer that the time passes, the more blatant his absence is because we have boys, we have, you know, so everything that's a milestone is bittersweet for me and because he's not here. So it's mm -hmm. like, but you just kind of feel like, I don't think, like I said, I don't think you ever get over it because you just, you feel like you're in limbo and you don't know where you belong. And so you're kind of lost in the world. So you do what you can. And that's, for me, that's keeping his legacy alive with boxing, you know, movies, books, everything and anything that I can do. What has been the difficult part with just being a promoter and having your guys out there and getting marketing on them? Um, the hardest part's always going to be just being a woman. You know, you you face challenges as a woman that most men don't. I'm a Hispanic woman at that, so then that's an extra challenge. So you have a lot of um, you have a lot of people like they don't take you serious. You know, they kind of okay, sweetie, and that kind of thing. And but mm -hmm. nobody really respects you for your mind until you pull something so crazy on them. Then you're considered the bee of boxing, but you have no choice but to do, go in that direction because you don't get that respect. Mm -hmm. What made you want to partner up with Diego, uh, Diego Sanchez, first and foremost? Well, Diego, he's another New Mexican. He's a fellow New mm. Mexican. And um, him and Johnny go way back. And Diego, like, I've always liked Diego. He's always been a great guy. And he's always been a, you know, he's kind of marches to his own beat kind of thing. Mm. And a little bit, but, you know, like I said, he's a great guy. And he loves Johnny. And he respects Johnny. And so... It just made sense and he wanted so i'm in the boxing side he's in the mma side we decided to kind of put those worlds together and we're creating we have so many big things coming up next year i think everyone's going to find appealing um can you tell me a little bit about what's going on next year if you could um so like i said him and i are collaborating and we're doing a bunch of stuff it's like we're gonna have some fights we have some films coming up we have um you know just a lot like we so Johnny with Johnny on his side we we're doing a, a museum for him and then we mm -hmm. have this new liquor so there's mm -hmm. 
there's there's a couple of liquors coming out for him and just a bunch of there's so many things you know movies with mickey rourke he's gonna co-produce co-produce uh, johnny's movie with me um with him being um with you co-producing a movie mm -hmm. did it bring back so many memories that you have always and like i said it's just even seeing mickey because he came into new mexico to film and um we he wanted to go see johnny's gravesite and he wanted to come and see johnny's memorabilia and you know it's it's like i said it was kind of looking at him it takes you back to when johnny was here because like i said they were friends and mm -hmm. so you know when mickey left here it was just such a touching moment you know the respect and just the genuine love that he still has for Johnny. So it made sense, you know, when he called me up and said, hey, let's do this. This is how I want to do it. And I mean, the guy's an ultimate pro and you can't get it to me, like I said, because his heart's for Johnny, you can't get any better than that. What advice or tips could you give somebody that's actually wants to step into the boxing ring as well as being a promoter? I think for boxers, the most important tip is um, you need to keep people surrounded. You got to be surrounded by the people who truly care about you because this sport, it, it's crazy. I mean, you get in and you have no friends and you go from having, you know, all these people who support you and then you get big and then you have all these people who aren't real and then you lose or you know something happens and then you're left alone and fighters go through a lot of depression they have a lot of highs and lows it's like a bipolar sport and so i would just heavily advise them to keep them surrounded with great people who are going to be there from the beginning and the end that's the most important lesson that i've i've witnessed over and over on the promoting side um that one it's a little bit difficult because you're on the opposite side. So you're, you have to negotiate the best deal for them and for you. And I would just say, keep it real and try not to take advantage of these, these poor fighters, because like I said, it's a, it's a journey. It's, it's a crazy business, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. What advice can you give women about staying true to themselves and not getting mixed up with this whole perception of things we see on social media? <laughs> so which things exactly before I answer on that? Um, you see a lot of women comparing themselves to like some of these Instagram models and all these different things that that is a whole perception because you know how the business is. It's, you know, it's very much uh, a perception aspect instead of, you know, someone being out there. Um, I think it probably, again, comes from proper like nurturing of the people around you. And I think if you have a supportive group, whether you're a woman or a man, you kind of know who you are, but I think every woman, no matter who we are, no matter how confident you are, you go through that cycle when you're young, you just kind of, you, you're trying to find your place in the world. And I think most women will experiment like that, but then they kind of get over it and then they become into it their own, you know, and then that's when they grow. And so I just feel like everything is it's just on the person that's doing it. But I feel if they're going to get into boxing or anything like that, you just have to be very strong minded and strong willed. And you cannot be um, dismissed because you're a female, you have to fight back and you're going to take a lot of shots. I mean, you're going to, you're going to be talked about. You're going to, it's a tough world. I'm telling you, you as a woman, you come in and there's so many men that they try to squash you. They try to get with you. They try to own you. They, you go through a lot of battles. So it's, right. you know, you just got to be strong and you just got to know yourself and you got to feel it in your heart that that's, you're making the right choices. With this pandemic, how have you adjusted and adapted to, you know, having your business out there, letting your business grow and getting the things you need in order for your business to fully prosper? You know, with the pandemic, there's nothing we can do about it. So the thing that you have to do is you can only change the things you can. So and with that being said, we all kind of went back to the drawing board and now like working with Diego, working with Mickey, this is like a creative time for us. So we're just putting our energy into what we can control so that when we're ready to go, we are just going to be so far ahead of everything that everyone's going to see what we were doing. So I think you know, it's, it, it kind of affects you because you can't do your live stuff that you want. But at the same time, it's opening all those creative juices, allowing you to be able to put something out there that's even better than what you thought possible in the future. And my last question is, how has your faith molded you into the woman that you are today? Oh, 
if it wasn't for my faith in God, I don't think I would be, <laughs> I don't think I'd have been able to go through all the, you know, the tragedy and the ups and downs and everything. So that's always going to be first because, you know, they say faith before fear. And so that's kind of how I live my life. You have to. Amen to that. Thank you for joining me on the show. I definitely, you know, love everything that you're doing. Um, you know, giving great words and encouragement to the women as well as myself, because, you know, I'm a young entrepreneur as well, too. So thank you for those words of advice. Thank you. And yes, um, stay safe. Um, that's out there. What say again. I said stay safe out there and thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity and we'll talk soon. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Have a blessed one. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.